Again, this is Teacher Rosine from Indaiwa Brilliant Academy. Um, so, firstly, I would like to appreciate everybody who follow me here on this our TV, dear HTV. So, I would like to encourage you again to continue to share and follow us. We will be collecting this national exam of 2021 social studies. So, last time. We stopped for home, question number 16. So that's why you are going to start for home, question number 17 again. Correcting, we shall correct all of the questions today. So let us start from question number 17, which states that explain in a city disadvantages of air transport. So today we shall be even using Sinyarwanda such that it can be understandable very well. So here, this question ni ilawa zango tanga ibibi tiangwa se ibiba zo transport tiangwa se gutkwa alira mutirele visho wala guteza tiangwa se ibibi joku wa wafo mwanyi mge uja muundi ukore sheje indeji. So, those problems or those disadvantages of air transport, we find it there, the first one, it is expensive so air transport is expensive compared to other transport then again from being expensive it cannot it cannot carry many heavy roads oh yes heavy roads it cannot carry Many heavy roads. This air transport cannot carry many heavy roads. Then again, air transport, its construction, construction and maintenance. Construction and maintenance of air transport, of air transport is very expensive. It's very expensive. Then again, it is, it is easily affected by bad weather. So, since it was a church in Nakari and we explain in a city disadvantages of air transport. So it is not easily affected, it is easily affected by bad weather. Then point number two, it is expensive. Point number three, it cannot carry many heavy roads. Point number four, construction and maintenance of air transport is very expensive. So that was question number 17. So let us go to question number 18, which states that describe the importance of transport and the communication network in East Africa. So here, Baraba Zango, Utange Akamaro, Ko Kuva Mwanja Mundi Changase, Ko Kituma Naho Muri East Africa. So transport and communication have many importances. Like here we have the importance, it is, question number 18, importance of transport and communication. Transport helps people to move from one place to another. So again, communication helps people 
to send and receive messages. Point number three, transport and communication. Both of them promotes trade. And again, here, both of them both of them provide employment. Both of them provide employment to people. Provide employment to people. So this is question number 18. Let's see that they describe the importance of transport and communication. Point number one, transport helps people to move from one place to another. Point number two, communication helps people to send and receive messages. Then, point number three, both of them promote trade. Point number four, both of them provide employment to people. So that was question number 18. So from number 18, let us go to question number 19, which says that explain the effects of missionaries in East Africa. Explain the effects of missionaries in East Africa. So, Angaha, Nukuvanga, to visit effects, the Shorakua, Arinziza, Aringarukanziza Changwase, Aringarukam. So, the effect of missionaries in East Africa, the first one you can say that they introduced, they introduced Western education. They introduced Western education. So, they they taught African, they taught African how to read and write. So they taught African how to read and write. So again, they introduced, they introduced Western medicine. They introduced Western medicine and the Jirut hospitals and the Jirut hospitals. So again, they introduced Christianity. So again, they introduced They introduced from Christianity, they introduced where new corrupts such as tea and coffee. So this is question number 19, which states that explain the effect effects of missionaries in East Africa. So point number one, they introduced Western education. They taught Africans how to read and write. They introduced Western medicine and built hospitals. So then again, they introduced Christianity. Number last, they introduced new crops or new kinds of crops such as tea and coffee. So let us go to question number 20, which is that Explain the role of schools, explain the role of schools in maintaining peace. So this question is that the, the, the things that a school can do to help to maintain the peace in our society. So the first thing here, teachers should encourage sharing 
among pupils. So again, teachers should teach pupils to forgive forgive each other. So again here, they should encourage group work. They should encourage group work or working together. So point number four, they should teach pupils how to, to keep peace. So teachers should always teach people, pupils, how to keep peace. Point in embarrass. Pupils should always the rules of the school. So, this is question number 20, which stated, states that explain the role of schools in maintaining peace. So the first point states that teachers should encourage sharing among pupils. Then, point number two, Teachers should teach, they should teach pupils to forgive each other. So, and again, point number three, teachers should encourage group work or working together. They should always teach them to work together and encourage group work. Again, point number four, they should teach pupils how to keep peace. Rest. Point number last, pupils should always follow the rules of the school. So let us go to question number 21, which states that suggest three causes of disharmony in your country. So, here to visit disharmony, to visit like conflicts, so here they are asking three causes of disharmony in your country. So there are many causes of disharmony in our country. So we shall just be talking about some of the causes of disharmony. The first one is corruption. Corruption. Second one, poor leadership. Poor leadership. Number three, hatred. Number four, to have unfairness. Unfairness. Number five, we have child abuse. And then here, number six, we can use drug abuse. So these are some of the causes of disharmony, where we have corruption, poor leadership, hatred, unfairness, child abuse, and drug abuse. So these are the causes of disharmony. So let us go to question number 22, which states that outline the signs and the symptoms of HIV AIDS. So this question is Vuga So we have different signs and symptoms of HIV AIDS, like loss of body weight. Loss of body weight. 
there is favor, there is loss of appetite, there is loss of appetite like this, grimness. So again, we have body weakness, body weakness and vomiting. So here you can even have a skin rash. So these are the signs and symptoms. Oh, the things that can show you that someone is suffering from HIV AIDS. So it is first point, loss of body weight, fever, loss of appetite, slimness, body weakness, skin rash and vomiting. So this was the question number 22, which states that I'll try in any three signs and symptoms of HIV AIDS. So from question number 22, let us go to question number 23, which states that identify Three ways of keeping personal hygiene. Yangwa se uvuge uvudjo ushobora kujiri risuko. So the ways of keeping personal hygiene are the following. So the first one, cutting fingernails and toenails. Regularly. So, point number two, brushing teeth every day. So, now we can see washing hands. Washing hands before eating. Then, point number four, avoid swimming and praying in stagnant water. Point number five, you should always wash your hands after visiting toilet. So this is question number 23, which states that identify three ways of keeping personal hygiene. Point number one, cutting fingernails and toenails regularly. Then point number two, brushing teeth every day. Then, point number three, washing hands before eating. Point number four, avoid screaming and praying in stagnant water. Point number five, wash your hands always after visiting a toilet. So that one was question number 23. Now let us go to question number 24, which states that explain the meaning of colors found in Rwanda national flag, or oh, found in, in the national flag of Rwanda. So we have three colors. First one is blue, the second one is yellow, and the last one is green. So this blue stands for happiness in our country. Then this yellow stands for yellow stands for where is it? In our country. Then green stands for 
prosperity and a good character. In our comfort. So this is question number 24, which states that explain the meaning of colors phone in Rwanda national flag. So the first color is blue, which stands for happiness in our country. Then the second one is yellow, which stands for wealth in our country. Then green, which stands for prosperity and a good culture in our country. So from question number 24, let us go to question number 25, which states that to write in full of the following abbreviation is O. You write these abbreviations in full words. So the first one is IMF, which stands for international International Monetary Fund. International Monetary Fund. Then the second one is ILO, which stands for International 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 Labor Organizations. So this was question number 25, which states that write in full of the following abbreviations. The first one is IMF, which stands for International Labor, no. IMF, which stands for International Monetary Fund. Then ILO, which stands for International Labor Organizations. So, let us go to question number 26, which states that suggest NSD examples of bank in Rwanda. So you give three examples, Changwa se utange injero eshatu za bank in Rwanda. So in Rwanda we have different banks like Bank of Chigari. Bank of Chigari O, Beka. Then we have National Bank of Rwanda. National Bank of Rwanda, Beneri. Then here we have Clean Bank. Clean Bank I, I and. I and MO Bank. So here we have NGT Bank. So we have here Murenge Sako. Murenge Sako. Again we have Mwari Musako. So we even have Urwego Bank. So we call it Urwego Opportunity. Urwego Opportunity Bank. So these are the examples of a bank in Rwanda. Where you have a Bank of Chigari, then the National Bank of Rwanda, O, Beneri. So you have Crane Bank, I and M Bank, GT Bank, Umurenge Sako. Umgari Musako and Urguego Opportunity Bank. So these are different examples of banks in Rwanda. So let us go to question number 27, which states that identify three examples of social services in your country. So we have different examples of social services in our country, such as or oh, example, education services. Educational services. 
So then medical services, medical services, banking services, banking services, housing services, services, water supply, water supply services, last but not least, electricity, electricity services. So these are the different examples of social services in our country where we have educational services, medical services, banking services, housing services, water supply services, and electricity services. So these are different examples of social services. Then let us go to question number 28, which states that suggest the difference between informal education and formal education. So these are types of education. So informal education, informal education is the type is the type of education type of education, informal education is a type of education given, given at home or in a society. So here they said that it does not include reading and writing. So this is the informal education while formal education is a type of education given in schools. Given in schools, it includes reading and writing. It includes reading and writing. So. This is question number 28, which states that suggest the difference between informal and formal education. So informal education is the type of education given at home or in a society. It does not include reading and writing. But this one, formal education, is the type of education given in the schools. It, for it, it includes reading and writing. So this was question number 28, which was to differentiate formal from informal education. So let us go to number 28B, which states that explain the importance of education in your country. Tiangwa se usowa anure akamaro Kuburezi Mujihugu. So, number B, the importance of education in our country. So, education helps to acquire skills that help us to get, to get a job. Then, education promotes moral development. 
Education promotes moral development, then education provides knowledge. And again, education brings, brings people, brings people together. So you can call this one maybe promotes friendship. So this number 28B states that explain the importance of education in your country. So the first point states that help to acquire skills that help us to get a job. Then point number two, promote moral development. Then point number three, provide this knowledge. Point number four, education brings people together or education promotes friendship. So let us go to question number 29, which states that explain the following terms related to forest conservation. So number A is afforestation. So if we say afforestation, means, means planting trees, planting trees where they are where there are no trees. So afforestation means planting trees where there are no trees. Then the afforestation means planting trees where where they have been cut down. So this is afforestation and reforestation, the terms related to forest conservation. So the first one was afforestation, which means planting trees where there are no trees. Number B, reforestation means planting trees where they have been cut down. So let us go to question number 30, which states that suggest the uses of the following instruments. Suggest the uses of the following instruments. So the first instrument is anemometer. This anemometer is an instrument, instrument used to measure, used to measure, the speed, the speed of wind. So again, number B, we have a hygrometer, which is an instrument used to measure humidity. Where humidity is amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. So this is question number 30, which states that suggest the uses of the following instruments, where the first instrument was an anemometer, which is an instrument used to measure the speed of wind. Then hygrometer, an instrument used to measure humidity. So that was question number 30. Now let us go to question number 31, which states that explain two reasons why the government carries out population census. So if we say population census, it is just the official counting the number of the people in a country. So the reason for a government to carry out a population census is to determine the level of poverty. Oh. Number two, determine the level of 
Eritrose. The level O Eritrose. I'm going to see you to determine. Determine the employment status. Employment. Employment status. Is to determine the employment status. Number three is to know the number. The number of the people in the country. So, number to know the death, death and birth, birth rate. Embarrassed, but not least, plan for citizens. So this is question number 31, which states that explain two reasons why the government carries out population census, or why the government counted the number of the people living in the country. So the first one is to determine the level of poverty, Second one, determine the level of illiteracy. Third one, to determine the employment status. Then, number four, to know the number of the people in the country. Number five, to know the death and birth rate. So, number last, but not least, again, it is plan for citizens. So, those are the reasons that he cause the government to carry out a population census. So let us go to question number 32, which states that explain three reasons why you think it is good to control a population growth. Explain three reasons why you think it is good to control population growth. So the first one, promote, promote development. So ensure easy family planning. Family planning. So reduce crime rate. Reduce unemployment. Reduce government budget. So number last, control the spread of diseases. So this is question number 32, which states that explain three reasons why you think it is good to control a population growth in a country. So the first point is to promote development. Controlling population growth promote the development of a country. Then it ensure easy family planning. It ensure easy family planning for Citizens, yes, for citizens. It ensures easy family planning for citizens. Then, number three, to reduce crime rate. Number four, reduce unemployment. Number five, reduce government budget. Then, number point number last, control the spread of diseases. So this was question number 32. So we are going even to stop from here. So we shall continue from question number 32 on what is so. Subscribe to our channel. This is Teacher Rosine from Indaigua Brilliant Academy again. 
So I would like to appreciate and thank you again for your big help by subscribing and following this channel. So let us stop from here. We shall continue next time. So like and share and subscribe to this channel, DRHTV. Thank you.